and we're back with some more oxygen not included in this tutorial we're going to have a quick cover of how to manage space when you first break into it what's your priorities what you want to get done and these are the four main things you're going to want to tackle the space telescope so you can start checking out the star map the, until you've actually studied at some of these planets with a telescope you can't send a rocket there so this is literally the gatekeeper to everything space related you need the space scanner if you want to automate anything to do with the opening and closing of bunker doors. You're going to want to be able to deal with regolith as well. Well, maybe. There's actually a percentage chance you don't care about the regolith and you don't care about solar power, but we'll just throw them in here because they're pretty necessary. But first off, we'll start with the telescope. I have installed a mod here that is very, very useful. It's uh, building ranges. It shows you the actual range of effect of this building. So as you can see here, this requires this much line of sight to the sky to work. And you'll notice that it's red down there. If we say free up a few tiles, and then we check in here, you can see, ah, it suddenly now has reduced visibility. Visibility 45%, scan radius of 5 cells. And you can see the tiles that are in white and the tiles that are in red. So we'll just crank that all open there. Now it has full view of the sky and you've got 100% view radius. There's no problems or anything. A couple of things to note here. Mesh tiles don't interfere with pretty much all of the things that are available in this game. So if you check here, that has not affected it in any way or shape at all. Mesh tiles, airflow tiles, they don't interfere with the vision of multiple space buildings. Very, very useful info. If you want to use this, though, there is the potential that, well, the moment you put this out in space, asteroids are going to fall, or meteors are going to fall right on top of your telescope and damage it and or overheat it. It can overheat. There's a few options here you can do that are very tricky. One of them is you can just wall it in. I mean, okay, this sounds terrible, but if you wall it in like that, you'll see it still works. It has reduced visibility at five cells. It's only got a 45% view, but who cares? You say stick in a door down here, people can still get in or your dupes can still get in and out and it will still work. This is probably the most resistant or the simplest, easiest way to jerry-rig it. So even if you do get hit by meteors, you can't actually damage the building. Now they will mess with its line of sight. You'll notice there it's all blacked out, but you can just dig it out again. Uh, one thing to note, you'll notice here that this can't see out the side. Uh, the reason being, let's dig down a little bit here. Uh, there we go, we're back. Once it gets up to about here and it's blocked at that section, it's going to mess with your visibility. So usually keep that area clear. That's the basic way, or that's the dumb way of keeping your telescope clean. Another option you have, if you just, if you do want increased visibility without too much effort, all you do is you throw in a couple of layers of mesh tiles. This can still see the sky perfectly. And if at any point a meteor shower does start, it can't hit the telescope itself later on you can just have your duplicates come back up and dig it back out again or you can even put in automated mining drills on the side and then you can get right back to doing what you're doing now this is none of this is automated so far all of this will require you to do some interaction to clear out the telescope but if you want to get into the automated section i'm afraid it requires an awful awful lot more effort which leads us on to the automation section and the space scanner yeah, let's get this up and running. The space scanner is similar to the telescope in that it needs visibility of the sky. So what we have to do here is we'll just rip all of those back out of the way. And you'll see here this is the cone of influence of it or what it needs to be able to see the sky. Scan quality here is 100%. Now you'll see the scan network quality. This is a grouping of it. We'll come back to that in a minute. But all that we care about right now is the scan quality. This is perfect scan quality right here. And as well as that, we can also stick in a bunch of airflow tiles here. It has no effect on the scan quality. Mesh airflow, they don't interfere with this at all, which is very handy. Glass, however, on the other hand, while well, you'd think glass would allow it, no, glass just will completely demolish the scan quality. We're now down to, what, 0%? How is it that bad? Wow, that is pretty terrible. One second, we'll just delete a few pieces here, and you should notice, yeah, we've got about 13% scan quality. It is, it is terrible. Do not try to use glass. Also, it does not work for the telescope over here. Uh, if you start using glass tiles, you'll notice it blocks it as well. I know that it seems like the, the logical thing to do to use glass, but no, unfortunately that doesn't work. Next most common problem you'll see with space scanners is people will place the space scanners too close to the edge of the map. Now, of course, this mod is allowing us to see the radius. Normally you can't, but the map sort of ends two tiles beyond this buildable section. You'll see this red lines. This means you can't build out there. So you can't build out there, but these first two tiles do exist. They technically are present. You can see here this regolith piles up two tiles high on the edge of the map, but no further. And it's the same for the scanner radius. That scanner radius, it needs to actually exist. So once you go up to two tiles there, that, that scanner will work just fine there. But if you keep going up and up and up, you'll notice the scanner radius is disappearing. That's because it's off the map. It's literally gone. So if we set, start up the map there, you'll notice scan quality is at 73%. Nothing's blocking it. It's just the 
the scan radius it's supposed to have literally doesn't exist because the map has ended at that point. So don't place your scanners too close to the edge of the map. If you're having difficulty remembering the distances, just download the mod. The mod for showing building ranges is very handy. I, as, as far as I'm concerned, it should be built baked into the base game. The distances you want to calculate from are the bottom left here. You're going to want 16 tiles to the left of, of the sky to be visible and 16 tile or 14 tiles to the right to be visible. Uh, there's a few other annoying quirks of these space scanners, unfortunately. Uh, the first being you can't have certain types of equipment near them. For example, here is a conveyor loader. This is causing interference with this device. Scan quality has been reduced to 93%. The proximity to it also affects it, so if we place it, say, right beside it, we'll see a massive drop in scan quality. It's dropped to 34% there because of its presence. There are quite a few things that can interfere it. Pretty much all the power generation buildings. Here is a post by Wandering Kid on the Clay Forums. I'll link it below in the description. This just lists all the buildings that are affected. Now you'll see here at the top it has base all. That just means all the things in here, if it just has all this beside it, none of those buildings cause any interference. If it's got arrows coming down from it, it lists the ones that do. So pretty much under power you'll see all the power generation buildings bar the steam turbine. So even solar panels cause interference with these things. You can't place any of these items within 15 tiles of it without causing interference. Which, you know, is a problem when you're trying to do a compact design. One thing that's also not very obvious is they also interfere with each other. Meaning they need to have their own separate scanner radius so they don't cause interference. This can be quite an annoyance. You have to place them about 15 to 16 tiles apart to make sure that they don't interfere with each other. A little bit more on that later. But uh, this, oh, one thing that can cause you problems is if you place these a little bit too close to the edge of the map, what you can do is you can say have a tile there. One second. And you will notice that you're not going to have any interference with that tile. You sh should be fine. Now just imagine that's the top of the map and then a meteor lands here and deposits a bunch of regolith. Just now that that's blocked off, you've lost that scanner quality. So try not to put your scanners too close to the edge or make sure that you're always going to be able to keep it with free access to the sky. Otherwise, you're going to get reduced scanner quality. You don't need to have perfect scanner quality at all times or with every single scanner, but this is how you get the maximum out of each scanner. Why do you want the maximum, though? Well, it's to do with the scan network quality here. You'll see there it's got a, it will detect incoming objects 34 seconds to 200 seconds out. It's sort of like a random percentage chance roll. Once meters are 200 seconds out, it rolls a dice, it sees whether it, it detects them or not, and it keeps doing that every second as it counts down. Once they're at 34 seconds out though, it will definitely detect them. That is the absolute minimum detection radius that it will detect them at. That's just with one scanner. If you have no scanner, or if you've hidden a scanner under a wall where it can't do any detection, it will still detect them, it just might only detect them zero seconds out just before they hit. And you need some time because you want to use bunker doors. You will unfortunately notice you can't perfectly fit uh, a scanner beneath, say, seven bunker doors. You need, well, you need to put down eight to fit it perfectly and make sure that it can see, it can be protected for, and still have enough space from when you open the doors. Uh, one thing as well, when you're connecting up the automation to open and close the doors to the scanner, you're going to want to put in a knot gate. No reason being, or is it? This way, when there is no meteors detected, which currently there's no meteors inbound, the doors will open. Now that the doors are open, it has full view of the sky, its detection scan quality is 100%, and we will detect meteors 34 seconds out, which is almost perfect. The reason I say almost perfect is these bunker doors take about, I think it's 36 or 38 seconds to close, a little bit longer than one scanner can detect. So with just one scanner, there's the potential that a meteor shower could be detected just at the minimum distance, and then you might accidentally let a meteor or two in and then results in maintenance. It's not the worst thing in the world, but usually what you'll try and do is get two space scanners up. Now there's actually more than one way to do this. Normally you'd think, well, my first instinct was always to put them over to one side and have two in a row. But you can put a space scanner beneath it. Uh, for example, we can just build down and just because that scanner is no longer in radius of that, say right about there, let's put this one. And there we go, second scanner installed. Its scan quality is 100%. This one's scan quality is still 100% because more than 15 tiles away. If they're within 15 tiles of each other, base to base, they'll get a, an actual decrease in quality. If we reduce them down just one more tile and put them 16 tiles away, you'll notice you'll get 100% scan quality. That uh, radius thing is a little bit misleading on that one. But that means you can stack two scanners on top of each other, though this is not always preferable, but what it does mean you can do is you could drill a big hole straight down and put stack six scanners on top of each other. It takes six scanners to get perfect scan quality, though personally I'm not going to recommend that for reasons that will become clear in a little bit. Uh, first, let's skip this forward a bit until we actually see a meteor shower inbound and the doors start to close automatically. Right, over here you'll notice uh, these space scanners have not actually detected anything. The doors are still wide open, everything's fine. 
However, we have put together a little array of space scanners over here. None of them can actually detect anything, but all of them are sharing the scan quality. So their, their personal scan quality is zero, but they have a scan network quality, meaning they're networked with these two scanners, even though they, they have no physical connections between them. They share telemetry information, if you want to call it that. So because of that, these have started detecting meteors. If we unpause it there, you see some of them have stopped doing their wobbly bit, and they're actually just detecting meteors. You can see here I've turned on the uh, the automation wires, and some of those automation wires have went, oh, we've detected the green ones there. They have already detected meteors. So the meteors are inbound, but what I'm trying to get across here is each one is independent. They'll all detect it independently from each other. And at the same time, these have still not detected it. They're, they just... Because of the way they're rolling their numbers, they have they, the maximum they can detect it is, or the minimum they can detect is 67 seconds out. Ah, there we go. This one has detected incoming objects, so it has started the door closing procedure. This one here, however, it's still fine. It's still scanning. It hasn't actually detected anything just yet. We'll speed this up a bit. Maybe it'll detect. It. Oh, now it's detected. Now both of them have detected that the the meteors are inbound. And we'll just close this slow this down for a minute now before the door is closed, just as they get to about there. Let's have a quick glance over this side, and you'll notice every single one of these have detected the meteors. And now we'll have the doors close. There we go. Doors are completely closed. And, oh, would you look at that? Some of them have, like, that's detecting incoming objects, but this one that used to be detecting incoming objects is no longer detecting them anymore. The reasoning behind this is they were dependent. These, uh, these ones that, where is it? These ones were dependent on the scan network quality, but now that the doors are closed, they can't. They they can't. These uh, they're not getting telemetry from these scanners because the doors are closed. No one anywhere has any scan data. This can cause severe complications. This is why I normally only recommend you use two scanners. If you use six scanners, you're going to detect them so far out that you'll close the doors, and then your scanners will go, oh, wait a minute, I can't see the meteors anymore, and then they'll try and open the doors again, and it gets all sorts of confusing. You can use automation to work around it. You can put timers and all sorts of things. But I've even timed it so that the doors will close, say, uh, 160 seconds after meteors are detected. But even then, they will occasionally reopen again, and then it gets... Uh, let's just say using two scanners is probably the simplest method. Now let's just enjoy some meteor showers, shall we? It would be far more fun to do it that way. Well, the meteors have gone. Once they left, the doors opened back up again. Scan quality is pretty good here, however. We didn't get any regolith over this side. I think we can change that. Let's just show a comet right there. As air quality looking. Okay, there we go. So what'll happen eventually is regolith will fall down here and block the scanner radius. So you see, need some way of removing that. You can tell your duplicates to go remove it manually every time, but that's kind of time consuming. So this brings us on to our second set of instructions, which is using robo miners to clear out this space. This is the good old fashioned C miner build. Now this has several advantages that just make it one of the more convenient ones to use. Uh, the first thing is you place it two tiles away from the edge of the map. That just means your dupes can walk across the top, build this ladder system in, and it really makes constructing this rather simple. Uh, the default policy is just to leave it two tiles away from the bottom. This means any regolith that falls down here won't be able to touch the drills. Those drills are sort of free-floating, as in if regolith piles up to here, has no effect on the drills at all and can't overheat them. That's one of the things you're going to have to worry about an awful lot in space, is things overheating. But with this set up this way, that means these two scanners here will detect if meteors come in. If they do, they close the door once... Oh, there come perfect timing. And how is someone overloading already? Ooh, I should probably split up those wires. Okay, after the meteor shower. All right, let's see this drill section in action. It's pretty simple, simple really. Any regolith that falls on top here is going to get caught by this drill to the right of it. And you'll notice the drills just go ham and start chewing away at that. And as they do, the radius of the scanners goes back up again. Just a quick, convenient way of removing all the regolith. However, you'll notice something, and let's say this drill over here, uh, let's go to the properties and check out the heat, where is it? Right here we have the temperature is 23.3 C. Now, as you can pause that there, you'll see it's going up. The reason being, this drill is active, and as it's active, it's generating 2 kDTUs of heat, and because it's in the vacuum of space and there's nothing touching it, it can't transfer the heat anywhere. It can't transfer to the airflow tiles, there's some drywall backing there, can't touch it. There, there needs to be some sort of medium, either gas or a liquid, between it and something else surrounding it for it to transfer heat. This means slowly but surely all of your drills are going to start generating heat and eventually they're going to overheat. You'll notice there there's a bunch of them in the green and a bunch of them in the yellow. This is the next thing you have to deal with. So, how do we manage that? Before we start the cooling here, I should probably point out, you can let these mining drills run for long periods of time. 
Uh, for example, here, the temperature, and this is 29.4. It takes them several hundred cycles before they're going to overheat. So if you're in no rush to put, you're not really in a huge rush to get the cooling solution in place. But if you want to make sure these are maintenance free and you don't want to look back, say, a few hours later and then suddenly discover a whole chunk of your solar array or scanner quality is completely banjaxed and then you're, you're in so much trouble because a whole bunch of regulars piled up somewhere, maybe put it in in a timely fashion. Now, what we have here is we have a cooling loop with petroleum. There's just a, a liquid pipe section here going through a little cooling section down here. If you want to see, I've got a tutorial on cooling, so I'll throw that up in a link in the top right if you're interested in figuring out how these cooling things work. But this is just a very simplistic one. It's designed for low heat amounts, so it's self-cooling, as in the output water of the steam turbine is used to cool down the turbine and keep it just below overheat temperature. This here will cool down the petroleum passing through it. It's down to 94 degrees, which is, okay, it's hotter than the robo miners are right now, but let's uh, grab a few ro robo miners and heat them up. What I've done here is I've heated up two of the drills by dumping some regolith on them, and they're now at toasty 220 degrees a piece, while the rest of them are quite chill. However, you'll notice that even though we've got this cooling loop of petroleum going around behind them, it's it's doing nothing. It's not transferring any heat. We need a medium in there. Now, we could use gas, but unfortunately that gas would interfere with the space scanners. Oxygen, carbon dioxide, all that stuff, it starts to interfere with the space scanners. It's usually a bad idea to dump lots in here. Small amounts can work, but the simplest thing is to put a little blob of liquid right there. And the simplest way to get a little blob of liquid there is maybe deconstruct that liquid pipe. So if we just deconstruct that there, You'll notice that, oh, we'll put on the liquid overlay for the moment. You'll notice that there's now 10 kilos of petroleum, which immediately drops down to a, a very small amount. Now, there is also a backing plate right there. There is a drywall backing. You could use a temperature shift plate either. It doesn't really make a difference. But what that has done is it's allowed the liquid to stay there. That liquid is now touching the mining drill, but it's also in contact with these pipes. And what we want to do is we want to put in a gold pipe. Gold, copper, uh, it doesn't really make a difference. Iron will do in a pinch. Now, as that passes through there, we'll check out the miner and we'll turn on the temperature overlay as well. You can see that the miner is 217 and now it's plummeting 200 and, well, 190, 180, 170. It's going down. Now that there's an actual way, a transfer medium for that liquid to interact with or for the pipes to interact with, the whole thing is just getting cooled naturally. So that's why I usually use petroleum. You can also use crude oil if you want as well. But uh, let's, let's eat finish off this uh, entire section by putting in the radiant liquid pipes and making sure every single section has a backing plate behind it. There we go. All of them have their backing plates, all of them have a little blob of petroleum, all of them have the cooling loop going through, and all of them have a radiant pipe crammed right beside, behind them. And now, their temperature shall always remain stable. Forever and ever and ever, and you need never worry about this again. However, do not put in a third scanner. Unless you're going to get into even deeper automation, don't put in a third scanner. The reason being, the moment you put in a third scanner here, what will happen is you can potentially, without any other additional automation, and if you just leave it hooked up like this, you can end up with the doors closing and then opening again, and then uh, they'll open, and then it will immediately, of course, detect the inbound meteors. But by the time it closes, you've already been smashed a bunch of times, and it will destroy the petroleum that's sitting there and cause you all sorts of grief. So two scanners and this setup, and you can pretty much just keep your whole area clean, your telescope can see the sky, and your space scanners will have plenty of detection radius. However, there is one last thing you need to take care of, and that is, well, there's two last things. But the first one is, make sure you have ladders that go up like that, or ladders that go up like that. The reason being is, at some point, well, regolith is going to spawn in down here. So let's say, dump that right there. And one of your dupes will come along, hop up here, and for some reason, they'll stand there. I don't know why they do it, but they'll do it. And they'll stand up there, and then the mining drills will remove their exit, and then they'll just stand there, get sunburned, and then they'll start running out of oxygen, they'll pee their suit, and then by the time you come back, you'll be frantically trying to install a ladder to get them out of there. So your decisions are either put ladders up like that, or put ladders up like that. One way or the other, they can at least hop out of there and escape. That's just an escape route for your, your, your dupes. Yeah, until it's happened to you the first time, you'll probably forget about it, but then never forget about it after that. But now you have one final problem, and that is this collection of regolith down here. Good thing to do is to feed it to shovels, but how do you get it all out of here without causing an enormous amount of problems? Uh, one of the annoying things is these conveyor loaders will interfere with your scanners, so if you throw a conveyor loader in here, it's going to mess with your scanner radius, which is a problem. However, there is a way around this. There is the automatic dispenser. This absolutely does not interfere with scanners in any way, shape, or form, and it allows you to move a thousand kilos of regolith per sweep action. Uh, also, as well as that, auto sweepers don't interfere with your scanners, meaning you can use auto sweepers up here without problems. Well, almost without problems. Before you use auto sweepers, you're going to have to use thermium. The reason being, these things are going to overheat unless you start introducing, well, 
Okay, let me show you a couple of methods, but the most prom promising one is to wait until you have thermium, and once you've got this up and running, you can usually wait until you've got thermium from space. The extremely simple system is, this is a sweeper, it can detect regolith, and it's going to dump it into that automated dispenser, which is set to a priority level of 1. And that's it, it just keeps dumping the regolith over to that section, and then this sweeper is just barely in range of the output of it, and it can daisy chain over to that sweeper. And that's literally it, it's just a daisy chain selection. You know, if we just go like that, boom. And now they'll just start pumping it over. And you'll see they're moving at about a thousand kilos at a time. This is even more efficient than using, uh, where is it, shipping rails. If you use a conveyor loader, it can only handle 20 kilos at a time. Which means at some point you're going to end up only moving 20 kilos from here over to here. This way you're able to move a thousand kilos from one side to the other. It will take a little bit more energy, but actually energy to get cost-wise, unless you make this really, really, really long, it's far more energy efficient to do it this way. And there you go, you've stripped it all out. However, what about this buff up here? There's regolith all along the top that's going to collect up here. And I tried all sorts of complicated things for moving them out of the way. There was ways of putting... I basically dumped gas into this whole area and I was doing an awful lot of things to make sure that the regolith could be knocked out of there. However, it turns out there's a quirk of this design I had never anticipated that makes that much easier to deal with. Now, uh, allow me to just do a setup first. I have dumped 500 kilos of regolith on every single one of these tiles across here. It turns out there's this slightly... Oh, sorry, there's one slightly unanticipated side effect of uh, having it this close to the edge of the map. Now, there's a couple of reasons we have it this close to the edge of the map. Regolith can only pile up two tiles, which means we only have to worry about two tiles of regolith piling up down here. Uh, at the same time, if you want to extend this down and pull down further, you could you could ex pull down further away from the edge of the map so that you have, say, three tiles of regolith or four or five that could accumulate, but you'll have to do the same down the bottom, corresponding amount down the bottom, so the robo miners have more space away from the bottom so they can't potentially get entombed. If this goes above four tiles of regolith, it will entomb that robo miner, depositing a lot of heat into the steel robo miner, causing problems. Oh, uh, one thing I should point out, all of these auto sweepers are made of thermium. The reason being, they can't overheat being made out of thermium because what will happen is the regolith will fall down on top of them and the regolith will absorb the heat out of them. Meaning this whole system for removing all of this across here is completely automated, requires no interference and will cool itself down. Well, the robo miner drills will be cooled down by this and the mining or the uh, auto sweepers will be cooled down by the regolith falling on top of them. As for this regolith up here, well, it turns out the meters hitting these doors, they actually have a blast radius on them that causes free debris to get knocked about the place. This stuff up here gets knocked off quite regularly, so you don't actually have to go up and get it. Now, I'm going to zoom it out here a bit so we can have a, a good look at it. Uh, it won't be re it'll be hard to catch, but hopefully I can do in a little bit of post-processing, point out parts of it. And before the doors open, we'll go across and see how many pieces of it was moved. All right, there was a, a few pieces moved off here. You'll notice all the pieces on the top have been knocked clean. They've been knocked right off the top section, and that's just because of the blast from the, the meteors travelling through the bunker doors. Now, some of these have not been moved very far. You'll notice this one has been pushed kind of to the left, but not all the way off. This one's been pushed slightly to the right. This one has barely been touched. There'll be a bit of knocking back and forth. For example, what happened up here was the 500 kilos of regolith got knocked down onto this section. These second sections don't get hit as much, but over a long enough period of time, they do eventually get knocked off. It's just going to happen. Uh, let me see, let's go through a second batch, shall we? I deleted all the regolith from up there. We're just going to wait until the second meteor shower starts and see if we can shift some more of that regolith off the second layer. All right, we only got one knocked aside there, but that was a pretty minor storm. <laughs> but uh, the point being, you don't ever really need to worry about the, the regular to collect up here. Eventually it will get knocked down. It'll take a little bit of time, but you're not too worried. You can also collect up the iron and gold and all that stuff that falls down here by just selecting these. However, do make sure you put these on level one. The reason being, this is not a sweep only command, meaning your dupes will come up here and activate these if there's nothing else that requires their attention. It's still a level one sweep command. So maybe make sure you have some other, make sure all your other sweep commands are above level one, which I think we can all manage, or you can just wall these areas in with doors and make sure that no one's allowed in, just to prevent them coming up here to sweep anything. It should be an entirely maintenance-free area. However, you now have, well, you now have access to the sky. And an awful lot of free light, which means it's time to get into solar power, because if you've gone to this much effort, solar power is just a tiny step away. 
and this is sort of what the solar power will look like. Uh, the reason it's done in this triangular formation or pyramid formation is to do with light efficiency during the day. Uh, for example here, we'll look at this one up here, you'll notice uh, the amount of power it's generating is decreasing because it's the middle of the night, but during the day the power on it is going up constantly. Uh, 380 watts is its maximum power output, and then once it hits that, that's as high as it can go. However, this partially shielded one is still going up. This just means that because this is, has access to less sunlight, you're using that sunlight more efficiently. This one here is maxed out. All the extra sunlight in this is now wasted. There's been a whole mass series done, on, or a whole lot of math done on this. Uh, there's some posts in the forums. You can Google this as much as you want. But yes, this is the most efficient way to extract power out of sunlight. And they're pretty straightforward to put together. The only downside to these is, well, you have to place them 15 tiles away from the space scanners, otherwise they'll interfere. Which means, say, yeah, I'll put that one just up one tile. And if we check the space scanner here, scan quality 100%, oh, dropped to 93. We need to lower this by exactly one tile. By lowering it down exactly one tile, yep, space scan quality goes back to normal. This just allows you to stack them more efficiently. Now, the best way to stack these would be to have just one giant pyramid so that only one solar panel is wasted, but my preferred method is to just every eight solar panels, every uh, or every eight bunker doors have solar panels just to make it more modular and easier to stick together because you're normally not going to cover the entire map with these all at once. So it's nice to have a way to just slowly but surely introduce them a piece at a time. So the next step would be to put in a, a staggered formation across here. The simplest way to do that without having to go and con consult graphs is, see this little green power thing here? Make sure that's directly above this the first empty space. Uh, same thing again, green power directly above the first empty space, and same thing again. Then on the way down, it's the same thing all the way until you get to the very bottom one, and then it's go across an extra one. Yeah, if I've done that exactly right, I might be off by one square. I'm in here. That should line up perfectly with that, and you'll notice right there, we're fit exactly in between all eight bunker tiles. So now we've maximized the power draw out of there as well, though you will have to stick in your power cables. And there you go, two layers of solar, a whole bunch, two scanners, your telescopes in place, and you've managed to take care of all of your regolith problems. This will remove all the regolith and pilot on one spot, otherwise it will start to slow down your game. The longer it goes, the more you leave that lying around the place, the more slow down you're going to get. Once you break into space, you really do want to prioritise, well, depending on how fast your computer is, it may be an idea to start consolidating that regolith into one spot sooner rather than later. If you've got the solar up and running, you're going to want to install battery boxes so you can regulate the power flow out of them just to store the power during the day so you have it for the nighttime periods. Uh, there's a tutorial up in the top right and that will deal with how battery boxes are done. Uh, this should be everything you need to basically conquer most of the space area. It's not the rocketry section, but it will allow you to scan all the planets, do everything you want, take care of the regolith, and pretty much manage everything you're going to need when it comes to taking care of the space biome. The save game file is attached, so if you want to go tear this apart, have a look through measure distances and all that, go help yourself. It'll be linked down in the description. On that note, I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck! Mm -hmm.